Hey everybody, Chachi Sanchez here, and in today's IAE Expo highlight, we sate our appetite. Both of us are just like, uh, sodas, soda, uh. Get this double dog in me before we go. We comment on the state of the verse. Bullies, bunch of Drake bullies out there. And we try not to get sued. See, X-Wings, I mean, Scorpiuses. Just another Expo tour. With that being said, Welcome to VR Citizen, everybody. Today, the last day of the IAE, IAE Expos, we have RSI, Robert Space Industries. As well as, we skipped a day, and we are doing the best in show. So we're going to check out both of those halls, and then, uh, yeah, that'll be capping off this year's IAE Expos. Next time we'll be doing this is when we head over to, uh, what you call it, uh, the military shows for Fleet Week. So, and then last and final reminder, be sure to drop by the stream for Christmas. Watch, lurk, support, get channel points. You're going to want to get in on the giveaway. We will have links to the giveaway itself down below as the, we put highlights out for December. But the giveaway is going to be an LTI Suyin. It's going to be this Drake trucker hat that I got from CitizenCon. And then it's also going to be this desk pad, mouse keyboard desk pad that I got from CitizenCon as well. So yeah, I'm going to ship these to anywhere in the world, exclamation mark on that. I'm going to figure out exactly what countries I can't ship to, and I will be sure to let everybody know. When I know, when I know, as soon as I can get to the post office next week. Be sure to drop by, hang out, and lurk. Do the voodoo that you do. Damn it. Okay. Okay, it's fine. It's cool. It's cool. Hello there. Anyways, drop by in December, watch the stream, get stream elements points, use those to get tickets, and then spend the tickets on the raffle. Win the raffle and get the goods. So, with that being said, let's figure out if we can even get into the game today. Both of us are just like, uh, sodas, soda, uh. Get this double dog in me before we go. All right, let's get going. Hello? So, uh, last day, day 10, RSI. Welcome what do we got the here Exxon in the tube? System. Man, that sucks that that's all the way down here at the bottom. Vehicle, your vehicle has been let's go. All right, all right. So, the X-Wing. What more can be said about, sorry, not X-Wing, the Scorpius. We're not getting sued. Disney owns everything now. Slowly pass through there. Swap over to the VR view. So, while we are throttling out of here. Are we over Microtech right now? Oh, that would be astonishing, so I don't have to warp. Thank God, I was about to say, the next step is warping out of here. Okay, so we can go straight over to New Babbage. And then looking around, yeah, I like the uh, the cockpit design. It's nice and close up in your face. Unlike, you know, the Hornet or something where the MFDs are way back over there. Only two MFDs though. Are we a little bit close here? There we go. <clears throat> okay, now we are the proper distance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could dig it. I could dig it. Not a bad cockpit. I wonder what will I wonder what cockpit this one will have to compare to. The F7 versus the F8 is very easy and obvious. Okay, hang on here. We're getting the, getting the photo. We're getting the screenshot. I was about to say, I was thinking hurricane, but this this is Well, no, yeah, yeah, it's got the turret. Yeah, so it would be the hurricane, huh? Yeah, yeah, hurricane, huh? Boom, screenshot, get a couple of those. All right, sweet. Here we are, guys, RSI, and then best in show. We waited a day to be able to do both. And then the finale will have all ships available to rent at terminals for everybody. So let's uh, get over to Apex Hall first. Okay, okay, so IAE, a universe of possibilities. Robert Space Industries. What can be said that hasn't been said about one of the most prolific and oldest 
starship manufacturers in the verse. Uh, here's the Scorpius. Go, Jimmy. Get him. Solid interdictor, able to pull ships and hold them. So, yeah. Catch, hold, enforce. I love how they were doing it to a Drake ship. Bullies! Bunch of Drake bullies out there. We got a lot to s Oh my... Damn! This is just all freaking hollow units in there? Jesus. Alright, so, we have the E, I guess, Mantis. Uh, and then the Man- why is the Mantis in two places? Interesting. Uh, we have all of the constellations surrounding the Mantis, and the Scorpius Antares, and the Scorpius itself. Um, uh, yeah. About that Antares, huh? On the right, we have all of the auroras surrounding another mantis. Not sure why they're doing that. We'll find out if they're any different. And down here, we got the rover and the lynx, and then the Apollo triage, the Polaris, the Ara Arastra, Galaxy, Zeus, and Perseus. It's a lot of capital ships. So yeah, let's get going. Hey, what's up, Nomad? How you doing, buddy? All right, all right, we're gonna be blasting through these. But the Starfarer and Drum. Okay, Jesus H. Christ! <laughs> these signs, man. Does that also say the Starfarer Taurus? Okay, so. The Constellation series, also known as, I guess, the Starfarers, Jesus. Uh, this one is medium freight gunship, right, right. A little bit more beefy on the weaponry. It's got a bigger cargo pad. We come over to the Aquila. This one, I believe, is the military platform. Nope, expedition. Always get these wrong. It's got advanced sensor suites and stuff and equipment on the inside. I believe that, yeah, it's got the rounded, um, uh, what do you call it? Cockpit window versus the more angular series. Uh, you have your Phoenix which inside is luxury. It's meant to carry people around back and forth. This will be the one that I do go into and show off. All right, so through the crew quarters, you got your luxury quarters. So there's a nice bed, fish tank, another bed, another fish tank, uh, seats that you can't actually head track in, I don't think. It's decent head tracking. I think, actually, that's a lot better than I remember it. I think these are the ones? Yeah, that's a little bit more limited. Like, I can't see out the window or look all the way left and right like I can in a cockpit. So they'll need to work on seats to, um, uh, you know, get those a little bit better to have us head-tracking folks look around. Meanwhile, comes with a full bar. Get yourself a drink. Warning, drinks do not work. All right, and then here is the cockpit layout of the Connie series. It's got up and down turrets, I believe. All right, that's two seats. Pretty sure you can get, yeah, yeah, upper turret, lower turret. So it's supposed to be like a Millennium Falcon, but also with this crazy ass floating chair bridge type thing. So, yeah. <laughs> Big ol' MFDs on there. Also struts for those that, um, uh, have an issue with them. They don't really bother me too much in VR, though. Later. Nope, oh, he just barely made it in. What up, buddy? So yeah, so that's the Phoenix. Luxury. If you're gonna get one and you want it for fun, I'd say get that. Otherwise, wait for the rework for grabbing an actual Connie. My man, you have got to go. So this is the Taurus, which I believe is the medium freight. So yeah, this one is full cargo. Uh, yeah, big double wide pad here on the Taurus. So yeah, if you want cargo only, grab this bad boy. It will suit all your needs. I don't think this has extra missiles and weaponry. 
So, yeah. Those are all of the Constellation series. Alright, for whatever reason, they are surrounding the Mantis, but I guess that makes sense since it is an interdiction ship and it holds things down as well as pulls them out of quantum. Nice big strutless window. Apparently people were complaining about it, so they wrote that into future designs. But yeah, we saw this in the commercial, what it does. It's got the interdiction stuff to it. Uh, you have your Antares Scorpius, which is the heavy fighter in interdiction. So, as we saw coming over here, the Scorpius has four guns, one on each wing, and then the turret guy has four guns. So that is eight guns that can fire forward. Neat. Very cool. Well, what does this guy do for the turret, right? So, you know, the turret person in that ship has something to do. Uh, what does this guy do? It's an interdiction shit, ship. He basically pushes the dampener and the quantum EMP device button. And that's it. That is literally all he does is just sit in the back seat and then hit the dampener. And then he can't even fight. He can't even do anything. The pilot can't use it. The co-pilot can't use guns. Like, this is basically another Rock DCS type, you know, or Rock DS type of situation where it's completely use, uh, useless for both parties involved. But, uh, hey, you know, some people bought it, so can't blame them for selling it. I hope that it gets some kind of rework to make it not completely stupid, but that remains to be seen. And then, if one Mantis wasn't enough, for some reason we have two. I don't know why they include two in the halts. This seems like a kind of an oversight, but hey, there you go. Meanwhile, we have the Aurora. The LN is the light fighter. More robust shield generator, pair of additional weapon hard points. The Legionnaire is dedicated combat fighter. I was about to say, yeah, this has also got that. So yeah, you can swap those missiles out for an actual uh, like size four, or size five torpedo. I think it could get even more ridiculous. So that's hilarious to just slap a torpedo on one of those and fight with it. Uh, we have the MR, uh, covers carrying capacity, but has combat capability too. The marquee comes with the bearing quality lasers and high quality gun cooler system. So yeah, still able to do a bit of carrying around like all of them. They have this tiny bit of interior that lets you do tiny little box missions. The Aurora LX Pathfinder. So this has a... Uh, Discerning pilot who never forgets where he or she came from. LX features parent patent 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 leather interior to guarantee comfort for those long stretches in the deep black. Does this have like the uh Yeah, it's got a bed. Less cargo, uh it's got a coffin for a bed though. <laughs> we have the Pathfinder, descendant of the X7 series, which tested the very first jump engines. Utilitarian to a T, or is the perfect beginner ship. So this one, yeah, it's got a bed in the back, and uh, yeah, cannons for the stock loadout. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is on this one. This is like the base version, the ES, and then the CL. Uh, light freight, customized for mercantile and trading excursions. The Clipper. Perfect vessel for aspiring entrepreneurs and seasoned traders alike. So, power plant for more cargo room. I think it can fit like an SCU down below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got cargo grid down below that can carry stuff. So, easy enough. Those are the Auroras, baby. Let's get to the hollow halls here. I don't know how they're going to cram all of these in here or how big they're going to be. Okay, so yeah. Starting off with the Perseus. So this is the gunship. RSI set out to make the definitive modern statement uh, in persuasive prevention. They looked into their own past to the historic gunships designated Perseus. Capable of shredding subcapital class Goliaths, the mere presence of a Perseus gunship in a blockade patrol squad is enough to make your most aggressive enemies think twice before engaging. 
just like its vintage namesake. So, yeah, it's got big guns, uh, it's got big guns, uh, and then it's got more big guns, and I believe torpedoes? Possibly torpedoes. I think. I think those are torpedoes. I'm not a big RSI guy. We don't know too much about everything. But however, we do know about the Mark II. This is basically a rebuilt version of the Mark I. Uh, or, you know, the, the, the Mark I was the original ship that had a civilian jump drive that allowed people to explore the stars back in like the 22nd century in the game floor. Uh, RSI is one of the oldest game or oldest uh, ship making companies in the verse. So uh, with that said, uh, yeah, paying homage to the classic design that launched humanity to the stars in 2140, Zeus Mark II has been updated to exceed modern standards while retaining the heart of this beloved spacefaring icon. So basically, a modern version of that ship, with all the modern amenities and stuff that you would want and need but on the frame of that old awesome ship. Next, I believe this is the Galaxy. Yep, yep, yep. Fully, modul fully modular design and an onboard hangar capable of deploying small ships. Cutting Edge Galaxy is versatility built into its DNA with highly configurable main cabin that can be outfitted with comprehensible facilities to swap for cargo, medical, or refining operations. So yeah, Galaxy is kind of jack of all trade with a, you know, fighter bay on it very very cool and fun this bad boy is the arastra with all the risks involved in mining the universe's vast stores of valuable resources robert space industries wants to make sure that choosing the right ship isn't one of them the arastra industrial mining platform was concepted from the struts up with a safety and efficiency in mind whoa 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 struts up i thought we were getting rid of struts bastards but yeah, this is the new mining ship that they're offering. Very, very cool looking stuff. Uh, a lot of people bought one of these, it seems. Or, you know, one of the many other big giant RSI ships that are on sale over the next day or so. That leads us to the Polaris, the Corvette. Nimble Corvette class capital ship packs a powerful punch with a full armament of turrets and torpedoes. So yeah, this is the full torpedo ship that kind of has the same frame. They all kind of share the same frame, honestly. Arrowhead, thin, sleek, triangular design. So, but yeah, this is the dedicated capital ship killer. Torpedoes, baby. And then the last one. What is this? The triage, the medical. Uh, legendary Apollo Triage from Robert Space Industries, the gold standard in medevac and rapid respo emergency response vehicles. Updated to support regeneration technology, the Apollo has a long history of providing critical aid to the Empire and beyond well over for two centuries. So, basically, if you've got a big fleet battle, you're probably going to want one of these for the smaller support ships to be able to have their pilots and crew respawn in on the fly. So, yeah. What up? Is one of you guys following me in chat, or is that just some guy? <laughs> okay, and while we are done with the Expos themselves, there is one more haul that we need to... No, wait. And while we are done with the manufacturers themselves, there's still one Expo haul we need to see. And that is the Best in Show. So, uh, every year everybody gets to vote on ships that are the Best in Show for that year. Uh, community voted and head-to-head -head battles go on for a period of a few months or whatever and then the winners are four different ships that will then get their own special paint job and livery that matches the one for this year see x-wings I mean Scorpiuses oh look see that's the co-pilot they did that job now the co-pilot gets to sit there and watch See here, see the co-pilot watching, not fighting. Good job, co-pilot. I'm glad you have something to do. But yeah, so after all the voting and stuff is done, there's four ships, their own expo hall, the best in show. Also, there's weapons and armors down here too. This year's best in show are the Redeemer, the Vulture, Corsair, and the 600i. 
Six or nine, that looks really, really good in the blue. Uh, not a fan, or wasn't really tempted to own one. But, yeah, if you buy one now, or had one in the past, you would get this skin for free. As with all of these skins, if you owned any of these vehicles in the year prior to this, you get this skin added to your account for free. That's how I got not one, but two Cutlass Best in Show skins. The gold one, as well as the 2019 pink one. So, yeah. But what's not to say about all the ships that we've already seen here today, or over the past week or so, with Corsair taking the cake out of everything and winning first place in Best in Show. But I mean, it's a Drake ship after all, so of course it's going to win first place. It's a shiny blue. It is a very shiny bluish, purpley. I really like it. I like the sh I like the colors. All of these look really good. The 600i looks great in that. The Redeemer, kind of male on the Redeemer in general, but I'll, you know, it's it's a good paint job. It looks great on the Corsair, honestly. But yeah, congratulations, best in show winners. So yeah. Oh, uh, well, that has been it for IAE the International Aerospace Expo for 2953 or the year 2023 depending on who's counting when and where uh, every single year I do these expos and tours so every single year expect to see walkthroughs every time there is one uh, I can't wait to show you what's in the future for these because they're always going to be having them and that includes Fleet Week as well as whatever other type of in-game expo events that they crop up on other planets and system. So, uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching all of this and doing the voodoo that you do. And yeah, you are all amazing and thank you so much for the support. We're really, really growing and building as a channel and community here. So, stick around and uh, till next time as always, stay safe and fly right.